The new Apple TV 4K is here. Wait, sorry, got that wrong. Let's try that again. The new Apple TV 4Ks are here. What's new and improved? Well, the starting prices are down for one thing. Otherwise, on paper, it might not look like a lot has changed. But if we dig deeper, there's plenty going on. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison, and when Apple quietly announced two new Apple TV 4K boxes, gotta be honest here, I didn't know what to think. Looking at the press release and checking the new product page, kinda didn't seem like there was a whole lot to get excited about. I don't know, I, I'm not sure what I was expecting. I mean, given it's an Apple product, I suppose I, like many of you, am kinda conditioned to expect a lot of pomp and circumstance around a shiny new Apple product announcement. You know, some amazing videography and CGI with a quiet British voiceover talking about a revolution in streamlining TV with machine milled unobtainium and the world's first smell vision interface. And then you gotta have Tim Cook out there talking about how Apple is so excited about the new Apple TV 4K. Well, we didn't get that. And really, when was the last time Apple made a super big production around the Apple TV 4K? 2017, I think? So some five years later, here we are with the latest gen Apple TV 4Ks. Two versions separated by $20 with a few key upgrades here and there. And I think it would be easy to just kind of glaze over what's new and different but I'm not gonna do that. I have a different take. And honestly, I think the fact that not a lot has changed is probably the best news I can deliver in this review. I'm gonna show you what's new and maybe more importantly, what's not new about the new Apple TV 4K. And in the end, let's see if it will be the streaming box to beat for years to come. Before I get down to it, what's your vote for the best streaming device you can buy right now? Is it the Shield Pro, the Roku Ultra, maybe Amazon's new Fire TV Cube? Or is it the Chromecast with Google TV? Let me know what your favorite is down in the comments. And while you're down there, let your clicking finger do the talking. I so much appreciate your support and all the feedback you've been giving me on what kind of videos you wanna see going forward. Message received. All right, let's dig in. So to begin, let's just run down the two new products we have here. Prices are down, which I think we can all agree is a big step in the right direction. There's now a $130 version and a $150 version. Both get a new Siri remote with USB-C connector, yay, and some might say about time. Both get an A15 Bionic chip and both now support HDR10+, Plus in addition to Dolby Vision HDR. Stepping up to the premium version gets you double the onboard storage, so 128 gigabytes up from 64 gigs. It also adds gigabit ethernet support and it has thread networking support. And if you don't know what I mean about thread, I'll explain that matter in a moment. <laughs> yeah, cue the crickets. Now at this point, I wanna shift focus to the premium version because that's what I have here, but also because I think that if you're gonna buy a new Apple TV 4K, this is the one you should buy. First off, it's only 20 bucks more expensive than the less expensive version. And second, as I'll discuss shortly, there's a good chance you might need the extra storage in the future, even if you don't need the ethernet support and the thread support. So as pleased as I am that there's a USB Siri remote now and that there's still an ethernet port, gigabit style, and thread support in there as well, the big difference here is the A15 Bionic chip. And if you're a Samsung TV owner, the addition of HDR10 plus support. So about that A15 Bionic chip, what's that all about? I mean, the brand new iPad only got the A14 Bionic, so this new Apple TV is more powerful than the new iPad? Okay, that's interesting, but why all that computing power? You really need all that to stream Apple TV Plus and Netflix? Well, first of all, and one of the chief reasons I recommend folks get an Apple TV in general, the Apple TV has always been overpowered and the A15 Bionic up from the A12 in the second gen model continues that trend. Unlike so many other tech devices that suffer from planned obsolescence, the Apple TV 4K is actually built to last. For many years to come, it's gonna be able to handle the latest apps, offer quick load times, fast scrolling. It's gonna be able to handle more increasingly fancy on-screen graphics. It can tackle updates Apple may have on its roadmap or even stuff Apple hasn't even conceived of yet. Look, I have a smart TV at home that's only a couple of years old now, and it is now slow as molasses, just opening apps and then again, getting something to play. It routinely just stalls on me. It's super frustrating. 
You're not gonna run into that issue with Apple TV 4K for many years because the processor is kind of a monster. As I sit here using it, I love how quick this experience is. Apps seem to launch a little bit faster than the second gen version, and they definitely launch way faster than the old HD version. But that horsepower, I suspect, is there for at least one more reason beyond future-proofing. See, Apple sent me a PlayStation 5 controller along with this review unit without really saying anything about it other than it was coming, which kind of seems like a sign. Obviously, it's for playing games, but Apple hasn't announced anything specific about any changes to gaming. I can only presume the more powerful chip could deliver smoother and more responsive gameplay. So I don't know what's in store for the future of Apple Arcade or if gaming ambitions range beyond Apple Arcade or at least Apple Arcade as we know it today. But something tells me gaming is gonna be less of an add-on feature that just sort of disappears into the background the way it has on Roku recently. It's entirely possible the new Apple TV 4K is a gateway into Apple's bigger, better gaming plans, or even Netflix's gaming plans. I mean, I can see the Apple TV 4K making it to Netflix's list of supported devices soon. And that's where I think the extra storage comes in. If Apple gets more aggressive with making the Apple TV 4K a gaming device, then having enough storage to handle bigger games is absolutely gonna be necessary. Of course, I'm also hopeful, perhaps, foolishly so, that the Apple TV 4K could support cloud-based gaming, even if the biggest cloud gaming players right now are big Apple competitors. Moving on from gaming, I also think this new Apple TV 4K is a sort of Trojan horse or gateway to a better smart home experience as well. I know that the second gen Apple TV 4K already had a Thread radio in it, but something feels different here with this new version. Now Thread, if you're not familiar, is part of a standard that aims to make smart home device use way easier than it's been for the past several years. Think of it as a low power wireless communication system that's independent of your Wi-Fi. So let's say you get a new video doorbell that's thread enabled. Instead of having to connect it to your Wi-Fi using an app, it would just connect to the local thread network. It's the thread that stitches all your smart home stuff together. Only one thread device needs to be connected to the internet and then boom, they all have access. It's really way smarter than having to worry about whether you're on team Zigbee or Z-Wave or whatever. I think the new Apple TV 4K here is gonna end up being a big part of that transition as it takes place. Again, kind of ahead of its time for now, but ready when you need it to be. And finally, there's the addition of HDR10 Plus support, which is interesting because this basically just helps out Samsung TV owners who don't have Dolby Vision. Samsung is the last holdout on Dolby Vision, refusing to pay the licensing fees to add it to their TVs, and instead pushing the open and free standard of HDR10+. Now, considering Samsung is the number one TV brand in terms of sales, it makes sense Apple would wanna serve that audience. A lot of them out there, right? So now on Amazon Prime Video and Apple TV+, Plus, some titles that would have been in plain Jane HDR on a Samsung TV while everyone else was getting Dolby Vision will now be in HDR10+. Here's an example of how that looks different. On the left is a clip from an Amazon Prime video through a second gen Apple TV in HDR10. And on the right is the same scene in HDR10 plus from the new Apple TV 4K. Same TV, same settings otherwise. The difference is in the HDR presentation. And for me, the HDR10 plus is clearly superior. So that's what's new. A15 Bionic chip keeps the Apple TV 4K seriously overpowered and that's a very good thing. It looks like gaming is about to get even bigger on the Apple TV 4K, though that remains to be seen. HDR10 Plus support brings a better experience to Samsung TV owners. The built-in thread radio keeps the box ready to be at the heart of a smart home, and we're one step closer to not needing lightning cables anymore as Apple makes its transition towards USB-C. That's the case for the new Apple TV 4K, but a lot about this streaming set-top box hasn't changed. So do I still love it? Well, don't forget that for many years, I was not in love with the Apple TV 4K. It seemed overpriced, comically overpowered, and just too much of an Apple fan device. But over time, I've changed my tune. 
I've come to appreciate the Apple TV because it's reliably fast, it has the least ad-riddled interface available right now, it's got top-notch cross-platform search to help you find and start whatever it is you want to watch, it consistently supports the best video and audio quality available across a broad variety of apps, and then, yes, there is a long list of reasons that Apple device users will especially like it, like SharePlay, uh, Siri control with your AirPods, audio sharing, spatial audio on AirPods products, picture calibration, using your iPhone, iPad, or Apple Watch as a remote, AirPlay, HomeKit, Apple Photos, Apple Music, Apple Fitness, integrated with the Apple Watch so you can see your rings progress on screen as you work out. The list goes on. But one thing I feel like I have to point out, one thing the Apple TV 4K can do that no other streaming box is doing nearly as well right now, spatial audio. With the AirPods Pro 2 or the AirPods Max connected to the Apple TV 4K with head tracking turned on, this isn't just nice for private listening when you want to rock out to the latest blockbuster or a live concert video. This is, in my opinion, the best personal audio experience out there for watching movies at home. And I say this having heard some incredibly convincing DTS Headphone X demos. Like, this is an end-to-end -end solution that just works. And you guys, it is so fun. This is the closest I've heard to big theater Dolby Atmos in the home. So is the Apple TV 4K the most versatile streamer out there? Well, no, the Nvidia Shield Pro can do quite a few things the Apple TV 4K can't. And for portability, I'm way more likely to toss a new Chromecast in my bag than an Apple TV 4K. But on the whole, the Apple TV 4K is probably the smartest, most advanced, most future-proof streamer available that will suit most people's needs. It doesn't try to be all things to all people, but what it does, it does better than just about anything else. Thanks as always for watching everyone. Do you have an Apple TV 4K and wish it did something it doesn't do or has it ever let you down? I wanna hear about that. So leave it down in the comments. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like.